Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. So yeah, Bitcoin is after the drop yesterday still sort of hovering sideways. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to take a look at the updated Elite Wave count. We take a look at where it could be going now based on the latest scenario changes we made on the Elite Wave count. Um, as you probably know, if you've been watching my videos, you need to be aware that on these lower time frames, if we do Elliott wave counting, these are very fragile. Yeah, there are usually two to three scenarios that can unfold that are very likely, and therefore the count, the lower you go on the time frame. I mean, if you do this on a five minute time frame, you know you're just changing all the time because you are investigating a case. You know that will then give you an idea of where the price will move next with a very high probability. Again, the Elliott wave method is probably the best method for this. Yeah. And the higher the time frame, the less or the yeah, the less you have to change your scenarios, um, because usually waves don't get invade, invalidated that easily. But on the shorter time frame, especially if you're in a sideways range, yes, um, there are different scenarios. And when you move from one to the other one, what you do, you just have to change your scenario. That's all what it is. That doesn't have. That doesn't mean that the Elliott wave method doesn't work because I always get the comments just when we change the wave count that the Elliott wave method doesn't work. That of course is not the case. That is part of the method. You are basically here. What we're doing, we're investigating the case for a bullish scenario. Um, and the more of these bullish scenario wave counts we can rule out, the less likely it will be. For me, there's currently only one bullish wave count left. Um, and this is the one that we have on the chart. And if that gets invalidated, then of course we are not in a bullish environment uh, or bullish scenario anymore. So we just need to be aware of that. Yeah. So this doesn't have anything to do with that. The method doesn't work. It is the same as, and I don't know why, you know, a lot of people don't seem to understand this, but if you do technical analysis without, um, elite waves, for example, yeah. And you just use your patterns, you just use your trend lines, you just use your support resistance lines maybe volume and you speculate, <clears throat> you speculate, for example, for a certain trend line to be held. Yeah, that is so or for example, that the price finds support on a certain line. Now, if that side, if that line gets broken, do you really say TA doesn't work? No, of course not. You're just changing your strategy. You usually have a plan when you do trading for the bullish outcome and the bearish outcome, or if the one that doesn't work, uh, that you did not expect works out, then you're not doing anything. You're waiting for your next um, entry. So that is what it's about. Really it doesn't have anything to do uh, that it doesn't work. No, you have to, of course, change wave counts if the price moves differently than expected, or it moves into your alternative scenario. And at the moment, we're not doing anything that we didn't have on the radar. At the moment, we're coming down a little bit too much for the more bullish scenario ahead on the chart. And that means all we do is we go, we fall back into our higher level wave count. We fall back into our uh, alternative scenario, even though strictly speaking, the, the other one where we had a one, two wave and another one, two hasn't even been invalidated, but it just gets less likely. And therefore I'm showing you now the, um, the one where we have to expect a larger retracement for this wave. Two, but someone asked me um, if I could show just again because I took it out. Uh, if I should, if I could just show again the labeling of this um, wave one here in detail because I'm always saying this is looking impulsive, um, but um, that person couldn't really see that impulse. Well, it is a very clear impulse um, this one. Otherwise, I wouldn't have mentioned it. So this here yeah, is a wave one, we could say, and this one a wave two. Then what we see here are just sub waves and I can count them as well in a minute, but then we had here a wave three and there are, there are a couple of ways of counting this really, but this is one way, this a wave three. Then here we have our wave four. We're not, cut, not, we're not even cutting into line one territory. Yeah. We can count this as a, a leading diagonal. We can also just count it as a normal impulse. So from that point of view, <clears throat> all good. Yeah, all good. And then this is the fifth wave. Yeah, so very clear, very clear impulsive wave here. Um, here again, one, two, then this is one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Also here, you can count this as a 
diagonal if you want to, or you just go into the subwave so we can take a look at that as well. Um, then here, one, two, three, four, five. So also a five wave move up. Um, if we go to the <clears throat> lower level wave count, we now see how this all comes together because then we can count the subway, for example, here of the wave three as well. So if we do that, then we can count, and let me just pick the other one here. Then we have here on this chart, a one, two. Then we have this as the wave three, and you can argue if this was the wave three top or this was the wave three top, doesn't really make a difference. Then here wave four down and the wave five up. And this is the wave three in orange. And here as well, one, two, here, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and these down are three wave moves. And here we would need to go into the, again, the lower level wave count. But again, then we're going down into, into real um, micro counting here. You can also see that it's a, it's a five wave move. Yeah. So from the low, again, you could possibly start here, but even if you start here, you've got your one, two, three, four, five. So these are all impulsive waves that are coming there to the upside and that are being corrected um, accordingly. Yeah. So this is absolutely possible to count all of this as an impulse to the upside. Um, then obviously we had our second impulse with an ABC. Yeah, and this is now for me the most likely scenario that we moved up in a wave one here and that we are now in this wave two. We never reach, bear in mind, we never, or remember, we never reached this yellow target area for the wave two that I had formulated. So we, we didn't even, no, we didn't reach it. Yeah. That could have been, as I said back here, this could have been very bullish because we did not retrace to the area that we would normally expect a wave two to retrace to. Um, obviously, as it turns out, it probably was not that it was the bullish case. It was just a wave A. We, we're moving up in a wave B. Yeah? And for that, I have to take this out. I would have to, again, recount this. No, that's correct. That is actually correct. Because um, that's a, an A, B, C as well. And we're now coming down in a wave C. And we can also take a look at the current Elliott wave count for the wave C. And um, this suggests we're actually very early in this wave C on this move down, yeah? So that's something we need to be aware of um, because the way we can count this move down is now that we count this here as a wave one, this here then as a wave two that retraced quite a lot. Then here, what came down here was then the wave three then we came moved up in a wave four. And again, there's a diagonal pattern. So no issues with overlapping waves here. And then oh, let me adjust. I might need to adjust that. No, this was the wave four in my opinion here. And then the wave five was this one here. Then we had a move up yeah, and that was sort of the higher. So this was basically then with this wave five completed, oops, completed a wave one in itself. Okay, so like that. And then this here, the way it currently seems is a wave two. And then we probably are at the moment in a wave three. Okay, so that would land somewhere here, then the wave two in purple and so on. Now this could go yeah, in my opinion, all the way down to 18,370. Need to be aware of that. So we can look at that from a, a retracement point of view, looking at the wave one high uh, and the wave two retracement, ranging here between the 50% FIP retracement at, 16, uh, at um, 19,630 all the way down to the 78.6% FIP level at 18,426. One key support will be the $19,100 level, which is the 61.8% FIP level. So this is the bullish wave count where we had a wave one 
and the wave two down here now. And then if this is that wave count, then we would need to expect, um, this would of course be the three here, then we would expect somewhere here in the yellow target area, the price to turn around after three, four, five is finished and finally start to move up. Uh, one more comment, yeah, one more comment is, I've always said, I've always said, all we're doing here is exploring a breakout to the upside. We have not yet broken this key resistance, which is important for confirming such a bullish scenario, okay? So this is also very, very important. No selective hearing, please. This is important. Any impulse below here can very easily just be a corrective wave. And we looked at that as well um, here on this bearish wave count where we can easily say this here, down here on the 18th of June was just a wave three. We are now moving up in a wave four. Maybe the wave four is now complete as we reached the 23.6% FIP level at 21K. This wave four could even go higher to the 23K level. That is what we would have to expect reasonably anyway. 23k because this is the most likely scenario for a wave four um, and if we go down straight away from here then we would have to go first of all below that previous swing low that would be a good indication nineteen thousand seven hundred dollars but as you can see on the bullish count um, it was even part of that scenario to move a little bit lower so i wouldn't necessarily count this as confirmation that the bearish wave count is working out in fact, we have to expect um, that there is not a lot of clarity really which scenario is working out until we go below the low of um, the here the um, 18th of June on at $17,500. But as you can see in both scenarios short term, we would expect lower prices. So in this scenario even, because we haven't yet reached the yellow target area, which is all based on Fibonacci retracements, and in the other one, probably anyway, um, even though here, yeah, and that is what it makes so difficult at the moment, generally in the, in the environment, even here, we haven't reached the ideal target area, but we have to be also in the bearish scenario on high alert that the market could be rolling over as we already reached 21K, the minimum retracement for a wave four. So therefore, and that is just what it is in early trends to the upside. Yeah, because if this is a trend, change already to the upside it is very early and it's just very uncertain that is what it is and welcome to crypto welcome to financial markets and therefore at the moment um, we have to expect both scenarios bullish and bearish with a high likelihood especially as we are still below this red resistance area and that is what i've always mentioned nearly in every video that this is so important to overcome to make the bullish scenario the primary one Okay, so hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.